salsa roja, and we're gonna be using fresh local tomatoes here today. And this is one of those great recipes that's simple to make, it's fast, lots of flavor, and it's one that I would definitely add to my repertoire of salsa. If you're making a salsa fresca now and I have a great guacamole recipe, I think this is one of those that you really wanna have uh, to make and impress people. For starters, we're gonna take a, a pan here, we're gonna char the vegetables and use a pan that you, you, you're not really, is not your show pan because you're gonna get some scarring on there from the, from the browning or the charring of the vegetables. I got tomatoes, I took the core out and we're just gonna put them in the pan and we're gonna let them char. Okay, now we're gonna add some jalapeno and when you make these recipes, lots of times they'll just take the whole one and throw it in here. But what I'm gonna do here, because this is so large, I'm gonna take a section of it. And then make sure I get the pith out because that's where all that heat is. I want flavor and I want some heat, but I don't want it to be extremely hot, okay? So we'll put that in. I'm gonna put it in skin down because I want that skin to blacken. And then we're gonna put some onion. By the way, if you are gonna use this hole and put it in, once it's done, you take it out, pull off the stem, and then you scrape out the inside so that all that hot, extremely hot part that gets taken out and you're just using the flesh. Now we have an onion here, and depending on the size of the onion, you know, you may want to adjust what the recipe says. This is a really large onion, so I'm going to use not quite half. I'm going to use a little bit less. Peel out that outer skin, and I'm going to put it in here to char. So now what we're going to do at this point is we're going to let it cook and char, and we'll come back every so often so you can see the color as it's changing, but the recipe is calling for char, so you want black, okay? So we'll be back to check this. Okay, and so the last thing we're gonna put in the pan that we wanna char is I have garlic. We'll put some garlic in here. We're gonna let the whole thing char, and we'll come back and check it. I'll move moving it around so you can see the blackening, and then uh, once that's all nicely charred, we'll go ahead and finish the salsa. Okay, so I turned it over, you can see the blistering of the uh, tomatoes, the skin is cracked, and you're seeing the blackening that we're getting here. And that blackening is very important because it's gonna give us a smoky flavor uh, that's gonna make you know this, this very, very delicious and add dimension to the whole character of the dish. So we're gonna let it blacken a little bit more. When we come back, we'll have a blender and we'll get it all ready to, to finish. Now that we have our vegetables nice and charred and you can see all that blackening here, they're also nice and soft. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put it in the blender here. So what we're gonna do for starters here is I'm gonna rough chop it and throw it in. You can throw it in straight if you want. I find that just doing a real quick rough chop just kind of helps the blender a little bit and you get a, a little bit more even product. So it doesn't have to work so hard to get this thing going. Onions are gonna go in. The garlic cloves I'll just throw in whole and then we'll put the tomatoes in. The other thing we're gonna put in here is a, a chipotle in adobo sauce. Now you could, if you wanted to, you could get a, a, a dried chipotle and then rehydrate it and put it in. I find that you know, these are easy to use, they're in the store, and you can have them lying around. You can, you know, open the container up, store the rest in the fridge, as, and use them as you needed. Plus the adobo sauce, I think, gives it a little extra flavor. So that goes in there. A little bit of salt, just a pinch. And now we're gonna, we are gonna add cilantro, but I wanna chop this up just a little bit first. And I'm gonna start on slow. I wanna just let it come together first. And I think that's looking good. Now I'm gonna add in the cilantro. And the thing about cilantro, when you're using it, you know, you can use the entire thing. Some people think that you can only use the top part, but all of this is tender. As long as the stems are not woody, they're fine to use. And I'm gonna put it in here. Again, I'm rough chopping this just to help the blender along. If I were to throw all of these things in whole, I'd have to pulse it and blend it longer. 
and I would end up with a, a more uh, finer sauce because I have to run it longer. Now, if you want a very fine sauce, that's fine. I'm shooting for something that has a little bit more texture and is a little bit more chewy, or has more chew and chunk in there. So here's the cilantro. Now, the nice thing about the recipe as well is the recipe is a guideline. This recipe will work if you're eyeballing it or if you like something more. If you like it really hot, you can add more jalapeno. If you are liking hot, uh, you know, cilantro but you don't love it, love it, you can put a little bit less. So the fun thing about this recipe, again, is it's a guideline and you can play with the different proportions to your liking. Now I'm gonna speed it up a little bit. Take a look at it from the inside here. It smells great. It's all coming together nicely. It's a little chunky for my, for my liking right now. I'm gonna taste it for seasoning. Smokiness is great, acidity is great. So I'm gonna leave it as is but I just want to get a little bit smoother, so we're going to go for it now. Let's take a look at it. See, I think it looks great. I'm going to pour it out so you can see it. But you can see all of the different, uh, the different vegetables in here. There's the nice color. You see some of that charring. It's got a really nice consistency, and it's going to, you know, it'll spoon very well, or it'll dip very well. And that's it. I mean, if you wanted to, you could add some lime juice. If you wanted to, you could add some olive oil. But really, th this is, is good to go. And this is nice and warm. I'm going to enjoy it nice and warm. Um, but you can make it ahead refrigerated, perfect for parties, perfect for get-togethers. And of course, I always like to serve it with a little bit of, of fresh-made guac on the side. But here's your salsa roja. And I'm going to go in for that bite. Mm. Tomatoes, garlic, smoky. It's, it's a cooked salsa, but it's not completely cooked because the tomatoes are, have a little bit of texture. So it's a one of those sort of bright, half-cooked, cooked salsas. Delicious. Again, put that into your repertoire, and you're going to blow away your friends and family. For more recipes like this, visit us at foodnam.com.